The night manta ray snorkel on the Big Island of Hawaii is a must do for anyone visiting the Kona side of the island. And we're gonna talk about all of the different considerations that you should take when booking your trip for this excursion. And you'll notice that I said, when you book this excursion, because you should book this excursion, you guys. There are a handful of things that you must do when you visit here, and this is definitely one of them. For those of you who are a regular on this channel, you know that we rate each category of our different snorkels on a scale of one to five manta rays. Five manta ray. And that's because manta rays are so awesome, and this is the manta experience that you want to have when you come to the Big Island of Hawaii. Since this is the Manta Night experience, of course it gets five manta rays. Five manta rays. We're not going to rank on our normal category since this is an excursion that you have to pay for. I tell everyone, if you know of another activity where there's something of this size that gets this close to you, that's this safe that you can do in nature, sign me up. There's nothing quite like this experience with manta rays here in Hawaii. So we're going to walk you through the two different snorkel sites that you can go to to experience these mantas at night, the two harbors that you leave from, and then of course what makes all of these different tours different so that you can pick one that makes the most sense for you and your crew. First though, what is this activity? What are we doing in the Pacific Ocean at night with these manta rays? So this actually started down at the Sheridan Hotel in South Kona where they started putting lights off of the hotel onto the water and these manta rays started showing up. And this light at night is attracting plankton and plankton is what manta rays eat. So over the years, they started putting more and more light in the water on these light boards and these mantas come all the way up to you and we're just providing them a little bit of a free meal, kind of nature's free meal with this plankton attracted to the lights. So on any tour that you're gonna be on, what you're doing is you're pumping light into the water that attracts plankton and that attracts manta rays. Of course you can see other things, but everyone is here for the manta rays. This doesn't really happen anywhere else in the world. So it's a really, really unique thing that these manta rays specific to West Hawaii have learned to do. Now there are two different options that you can do here. We're a snorkel channel, and so we're gonna talk about snorkeling primarily, but this is a scuba dive that you can do as well. And a lot of people wonder, should I scuba dive this? Should I snorkel this? First of all, you do need to be scuba certified to even qualify to do a dive for this activity. And if you love to scuba dive, by all means, you should do this as a dive. It's a completely unique thing that you won't be able to do anywhere else in the world. And normally I would say the advantage of scuba diving is that you get to be down close to things for longer, right? You get to stay down on the bottom, you get to experience things up close and personal for quite a while compared to snorkeling. But in this particular case, you actually don't gain all that much in my mind doing the scuba dive versus doing the snorkel because that light, it's all about the light. And so, when you are doing a snorkel activity, you've got the opportunity to have even more light. And a lot of these light boards that are being put in the water pump light off of either batteries or from the boat directly. And so you get that much more powerful light coming in the water from above as you do from the bottom with dive lights for a scuba diver. And the key is that the more powerful the light is, the more plankton you attract to that light and the more the mantas are going to want to come up to you and so when you have these light boards in the water these mantas do come very very close to you so you kind of lose the main advantage to my, in my mind of what scuba diving gains you again do it if you love scuba diving but this is a great activity to do snorkeling you're going to get as close if not closer to the manta rays than anyone so when you're doing the snorkel, what you're gonna be doing is you're really just floating there. You have a snorkel in your mouth, you have a mask on, and you're just gonna be hanging on to the light board for whichever company that you're with. And those mantas will just come up to you and all you need to do is just float there. And so you just need to be comfortable with a snorkel in your mouth. I would say that you should have snorkeled before. This should not be your first time snorkeling. And you need to have some kind of level of fitness so that you can get in and out of the water okay. Most of the time you're gonna just kind of slide into the water, but you'll probably be on some kind of a ladder to get out of the water. And some nights it can be choppy, so you do need to be able to have some relative fitness to be able to get on and off of a boat. Now, full disclosure, I have been a Night Manta snorkel guide now for a couple of years here in Hawaii. I work with SeaQuest, and so that is my base of operations and where a lot of my experience comes from, but we do uh, I'll go to the same spot. We know a lot of the same people. I've been up to the other locations. That was my first experience. It was actually when Michelle and I came and visited the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, we went up to the north site that we'll talk about here momentarily. But when it comes to the differences in the tours that are offered, there's one key difference, and that is where are they going to go to do the snorkel? There are two main sites. One, the original site is out of Keaho Harbor, down by the Sheridan Hotel in South Kona, Keaho Bay. The other location is up at Garden Eel Cove, which is 
right by the airport. They're not especially close to each other, and there's a couple key differences between the two sites. Up at north at Garden Eel Cove is going to be your primary dive location. So if you are wanting to dive or someone in your party wants, that's going to be the location that you want to make sure that your company is arriving at. At Garden Eel Cove, you can see often more than a dozen mantas swimming around, which is just an frankly almost overwhelming sight to see that many huge animals swimming around like that but it's truly extraordinary they also strike out and have zero mantas more than keho keho down by the sheridan is gonna at most probably have 10 in an evening and more like five or six but you're gonna get those very regularly there's very few nights down there that they don't get any manta rays another key difference between the two sites is the distance between the harbor that you're going to leave from and getting to the site keho harbor is very close to the location uh, outside of the sheridan uh, where you're going to be doing your snorkel up north you're going to be driving about 25 or 30 minutes to get to your dive site or your snorkel site and that can be a cool thing. And so when Michelle and I did it, we said, hey, you know, we're not gonna get on a boat otherwise, let's kind of make this our, you know, sunset cruise slash manta snorkel, right? Which is great, and it was exactly that. Um, but if you're someone who maybe isn't certain how you're gonna feel on the water, uh, or you know that you're prone to seasickness, I would definitely consider this when you're choosing your company and know which location they go to, because that's gonna be, you know, 30 minutes out and then 30 minutes back. And so if you weren't feeling good in the water, then you still have to sit on the boat for another 30 minutes. Another key difference is gonna be weather. And when I say weather, I'm talking about weather on the ocean and if there's chop and swell and stuff like that. And when there's bad weather, that typically affects the North Garneal Cove location significantly more than it does Keho Harbor. Keho is very sheltered for the most part. And so on bad weather nights, those North boats will often come down to Keho Harbor. And there may be no way to know that, but you'll just know that this would be an alternate location for them. In either case, you're gonna be out on the water for a good 25 minutes before you arrive at your destination. Again, that could be a fun thing, or that could be a thing that you really aren't looking forward to. So definitely consider that before booking. But the boats in Keho only go to the Sheridan location. So let's talk a little bit about the different harbors that you could go out from. So Hanukahau Harbor is the North Harbor, and that's off of Queen K or Highway 19, just north of downtown Kona. So it's very close to town. It's a very large harbor, well, comparably, and uh, it has lots of parking, has restrooms, facilities, but that said, it, it has a couple of those, but you just need to know where your boat is gonna be launching from. And so those companies that go from up there are gonna give you specific directions about how to find where their boat is located. The Keoho Harbor is much smaller. It's down by the Sheridan Hotel. So you, you'll see a left turn to go to the Sheridan and the harbor is straight ahead as you come down. Parking is much more of a problem down here because it's just much smaller. Uh, you're gonna have to park on the side of the road most likely. There is a small parking lot at the very end of the road. You want to avoid parking right next to the boat ramps in the long parking stalls. Those are for boats and their uh, trailers. And so uh, you do have to walk a little ways to get in to the harbor area at Keho. It's not directly next to the Sheridan. It's further down the road. You make a left turn for the Sheridan, you go straight to get to the harbor. Both Hanukahau Harbor up north and Keho Harbor down south both have uh, restrooms nearby, although the North Harbor is significantly bigger. It does have more parking compared to Keho. Keho, that's probably one of the biggest drawbacks is parking is minimal and you really have to park on the side of the road. It might seem like it's all going to be the same experience, but there's actually a fair amount of uh, differentiation between the companies, as you'll see in the different prices that are offered as well. So some things to consider. Basically, there are a variety of experiences based on the boat alone. So you could take a sailboat, you could take a canoe, you could kayak out on some locations. You could do a big boat, you could do a small boat. There's a variety of boats uh, out there. And so if you wanna have a unique experience based on that, that's one thing to consider. Another important part is where do you check in versus where do you board the boat? For a lot of the north locations, their check-in site is actually at a business that's not near the harbor. And so you check in earlier and then you still need to drive over to the harbor get in there so that could be a, a bit of a hassle. Keho is much smaller so it's a lot easier to just find where you're supposed to be. I say that but there are a ton of vans basically with signs on them and that is the vast majority of companies down there. There's only two companies that have physical locations. Uh, Sequest is one of them 
but everyone gets checked in and then just gets on their boat kind of right away right there and so once you park a car you're in the place that you need to be and that's it so it's a little bit simpler down in Cahill Hill once you do find your company that you're going out with some of the things that you definitely want to consider would be the number of in-water guides per guest some of the larger groups you know they're going to have fewer crew and team members in the water with you uh, and a lot of guests in the water so while the other smaller boats might have you know more like you know seven or eight people per person and, and you're just going to feel a little bit more cared for it's going to be more of a personal experience if you're feeling uncomfortable in the water it's really nice to have an in-water guide who is there to help you out immediately if you're having an issue versus trying to get someone's attention right if you're having a problem when you have more guides in the water you often will learn more about the manta rays if you have questions you can poke your head up and just ask a question uh, we love giving manta facts and, and employ people that you know are very interested in educating as well as just making sure that you're safe and comfortable in the water and so that's another thing to consider as you're looking at different companies one thing you'll definitely want to be aware of is the rebooking policy should you not see any manta rays on your night out again that's much more of a chance up on the north boats but it does happen down in Cahoe some as well, just about a handful of times a year. But you want to know if I end up on that trip, just like Michelle and I did, what happens? Do I get to go out again? Uh, do I just get a refund or what? How? what's your policy on that? For the most part, most of these companies will take you out again if that happens at no cost or a reduced cost. Um, but that is definitely something you wanna know before you book with a certain company. As you look at the various price options available to you, another, uh, Another big point of differentiation is how new their gear is. You know, do you have new wetsuits? Do you have new masks? We offer at Sequest prescription snorkel masks for people who uh, need to see uh, in the water, right? You know, this is the whole activity is visual. So if you have uh, thick glasses and you just have a normal snorkel, you're not gonna be able to enjoy your time as nearly as much as someone who has good vision. And so we offer prescription masks. So you can ask about that with the different companies. And you just want to feel comfortable about the stuff that you're putting on, especially if you're not using your own gear. Water time is another consideration. Some companies uh, like Sequest will put you in the water for 40, 45 minutes. Other companies, it's more like 20 minutes. You know, okay, you saw your man array, we're out of here. Um, so you want to ask those questions before you book. Another thing that you're going to pay for is the quality of lights. And so the companies that charge a little bit more are going to have more powerful lights. Those more powerful lights attract more plankton. Now that might not matter if you were the only boat out there, but when you're out there with you know a dozen other boats, the strength of your lights in the water does matter and those mantas are gonna hang closer to the boards that have more powerful lights and thus more plankton. Finally, there's like different extras that companies will offer. You know, one would be, can you get merchandise? Can, you know, I wanna buy some souvenirs to commemorate my experience. Do they have an actual uh, you know building and store and merch that I can get? Can I rent a camera to record my experience? Do they have a GoPro rentals or some kind of underwater camera that I can rent out and then have the SD card to go with me home? And other fun little amenities like hot chocolate or cookies afterwards, just fun things like that. One key thing to know that regardless who you go with, there's no touching the manta rays. They are a protected species. They have a special mucous membrane that protects them from sea-based bacteria. And if we're touching them, we're introducing land-based bacteria. And so that's a big no-no. No company that you're gonna be with is gonna allow you to touch the manta rays. Consider subscribing if you like snorkeling or if you are coming to Hawaii to go snorkeling. We have a whole bunch of snorkel guides along with hiking guides. We just celebrate all kinds of nature on this channel and we would love to have you be a part of that. If you have questions or comments, put those in the chat below and we'll get back to you. And enjoy your time in Hawaii. I really hope that you uh, take in this experience and find a tour that's right for you. And we'll see you next time.